watched the the original kick go wide and you thought holy cow is it is, is that what happened and you know you start celebrating and then and then there's a few people not and you're kind of well hold on here Welcome to the Rider Outsiders, where we talk CFL football in your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. We've got a special show today. We have Gene Mikowski on the show today. And joining me right now, Dylan Robson and the self-professed genius of Canadian football, Bryce Wiles. I'm here, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and I'm glad that we are all together. And you know why? Because I think it's time for some quick hits. Wow. Wow. First up, with Toronto one game from being eliminated from the playoffs, guys, what is the one move you would make to help rebuild this team for next year? Bryce, what would you do? Ooh, the one move, that's put me on the spot. You know, if I want to be an armchair coach, maybe like an armchair owner, I would say move the team out of Toronto. Maybe that'll help out. Dylan? Well, there you have it. Uh, you know, you know, the one Move. Well, what's, what's your first move? Ricky Ray retires. First move. Um, because you can't let that linger, first of all. But uh, move move two, uh, they're not a bad team. This McLeod Bethel Thompson is a good guy to build a team around, and you just got to keep bringing in some people around him. So basically, the move I'm making is keep the momentum going. Yeah, they won the Grey Cup this year. They're out of the playoffs. But they built. They have some things here they can build on. So that's what it is. Keep building. Keep Inter- building. Interesting take. I say put Franklin in for the rest of the season. We've seen enough tape on uh, what is it? Bethel McLeod Thompson. Name check. McLeod, McLeod Bethel Thompson. McLeod Bethel Thompson. All right. Put Franklin in. Let's see what he has. Because he was like highly touted for many years, and then he sort of uh, flamed out. Number two. That's a good point. Number two is uh, is Sack Achuan. Charleston Hughes changed his Twitter name to Sack Achuan. He actually spells it uh, <laughs> A T C H A W E N. So not yeah. you know a little little you know it's still spelled like that, which is interesting. But Sack Achuan, uh, Bryce, I believe you're eating a little bit of crow here. You thought that was a horrible name. Uh, what do you think about that, Bryce? Oh. Say it ain't so. Hughes, come on. Uh, like, no one can even say the name. Like, you can't even say it. Like, it's Sack at, sack at you one. It you know, if, doesn't yeah. roll off the tongue. You know what? I did mention that uh, a couple weeks ago when I first heard it. Yeah, you're throwing Suter just, under the bus with that. You thought it was a horrible I, name. I hated it. And I still hate it. And I hope it dies. Sack at you one. Dylan? Austin Hughes can do whatever he wants. That's that's a good point. Good point. Now, uh, number three, Rod Black during the Ryder game called the Ryder defense Gang Green. We've been looking for a nickname all season. What do you think, Gang Green? Who wants to take that one? Uh, yeah, well, it's not the first time the Riders have been called Gang Green. So I'm not. I'm going to give subtract some points on originality for mm-hmm. from Rod Black. Uh, also, the fact that nobody wants Gang Green uh, is another reason we're going to subtract a couple points on that nickname. <clears throat> and um, I, I think that we can do better. <laughs> I think we can do better. Well, yeah, I think we can do better. Listen, Gang Green is not a good name. It's not a good nickname. It sounds too much close to Gang Green. I think that's which the is point. A condi- which is a condition, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's when you're like, you're like... What is it? Um, you're getting an infection and your toes fall off or something? I don't know, right? Nobody yeah, yeah. wants to have that as their nickname. So I'm saying, I ah, uh, that's no, number two. Hate it. Number three. Hate it. What do you got for number four? I'm probably going to hate the next quick hit. Number four, Manitoba writes off eighty-two million dollars. That's a loan to the Bombers. <laughs> Money used to build Investor Group Field, and this is, I think, the second loan that they've written off. And uh, so I guess that brings me to the question, it's hard enough to get stadiums built. Is this going to hinder uh, other teams who are trying to build stadiums when uh, people see that these loans are getting written off? Tough question. What do you think, Dylan? 
tricky question because uh, there was a lot of red tape in the Winnipeg Stadium build right from the moment they announced it. Then they picked the property, and then there was all this controversy, and uh, they finally got it built, and then the foundation started cracking or something like that. And then they couldn't move trucks in, so they had to move the Grey Cup stage up to the end zone, up to the stands. Like there's, there's been all sorts of issues with the stadium. I've been in the stadium to watch football, and it's a hell of a nice place to watch football, but uh, definitely could have handled the way it was built. Oh, not to mention, it was like a year late. They had already closed. That's right. They closed Canada in stadium, and like did the farewell, and then we're like, ah, we're going to reopen it and come back. For <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to hinder any other cities. There's going to be red tape no matter where you go. and uh, But hopefully it helps cities plan a little better. I think we learned a lot from the way Winnipeg built their stadium. And uh, we learned how not to do it when we built ours in here in Regina. Bryce, any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how that works. Like, it's the stadium, right? But do the bombers, uh, like, if, if anyone, I, I know I'm the genius, but how does it work? Do the bombers don't own it? They have to pay for it? Yeah, the bombers basically by... say, we will pay for a portion of the stadium to get built as long yeah. as we have other investors and other people paying for parts of the stadium as well. Uh, so, no, they don't own it, but it's like they're putting their name on the line and, and then they couldn't repay it back. So, yeah, And it's it's one of those things where, well, the team goes bankrupt and moves or the province says, we need the Bombers here, so let's keep... And, hey, this might be going way past our quick hit allotted time. Oh, the, but the worth timer's mentioning. on. You got 10 seconds. Yeah, Saskatchewan Rough Riders had a telethon back in the 90s to save this team and we basically didn't make the the amount and there was a mystery bailout at the last second of that telethon probably the government who bailed us out that time so hey it happens it sounds like all these stadiums are sort of a group effort the team puts some money in the city does the province does and the province is the biggest guys with the deepest pockets so they bailed out the team which Makes sense. There's no way the Bombers are going to make $100 million to pay this thing off. Okay, let's move on. With their ninth win, the Rough Riders defeat Montreal 34-29 in what turned out to be a nail-biter, though they were up by two scores late in the game. Nearly let that one slide away. Dylan, I got to say, Zach Kalaros had the best game of his season, throwing for almost 400 yards. I was just happy to see him have some success what did what did you like there yeah Zach Kalaris you know what and one of the I can't remember who was commenting was it Rod Black who was the commentator I think yeah it was Rod, Rod Black and uh with Dwayne Ford Dwayne Ford yep and uh one of them made a point about how Zach Kalaris plays his best football when he's doing just what he needs to do to win and it mm-hmm. seems like kind of a weird thing to say but uh it's been how we play. So they were, then they were talking about the, the actual playmaking. His highlight reel stuff is coming, as not as we're blowing teams out, but as we're doing just enough to get the next touchdown, just enough to go up by a score. you know. And uh, that's Zach Kolaris. He's given us what we need to do to win, and there's a lot of good plays happening while he does it. We've won six of the last seven, and Zach Kolaris, I think, despite struggles in the offense, has shown – Incredible talent during a lot of the games that we've won. Yeah, and he, well, he threw for 70% uh, this game. He pulled the ball down a lot when he had to. He threw the ball in the dirt when he had to. He's protective. Uh, the one interception wasn't really his fault, right? It was tipped up. It was, it was caught by uh, the middle linebacker there. Bryce, talk about the offense a little bit here. What would you like about the offense? What would you see? Oh, well, you want to talk about the offense? Well, we're talking about quarterbacks. Why not I flip sides? Okay. Let's talk about the the money man, Johnny Manziel, he actually showed up and played this week. And he made a game out of it, even though his stats don't really show for it. Um, Except the, the game two wasn't touchdown exciting. passes, yeah. Yeah, and he had that double reverse flea flicker for his first touchdown. Like, that's going to be a highlight reel touchdown. Oh, I yeah. think they're going to be showing that in the States. Oh, look at what Johnny Football oh, is yeah. doing in Canada. Oh, yeah. Throws his first thing. So... He was doing good, and even later in that game, he had that 
pump fake that fooled everybody. He even fooled he even fooled TSN. I'm like, yep. come on, TSN. And then he pulls it down and he comes up a big run. Like he might be coming into his own because when you saw him get traded to Montreal, we thought, oh no, they got ripped off, right? But yep. uh, who knows? Yeah, Manzella definitely had his best game of the season, and uh, Trey Mason had a great game too, 13 for 86 yards, and he, he was just slipping and sliding, and he was getting those you know eight, nine-yard runs. It was quite impressive. Uh, Thigpen uh, didn't have a big game, but uh, Mason uh, made up for it. Uh, what else did you see, Dylan? Yeah, the, the, you mentioned Trey Mason right near the end of the game there. He had this one run where he basically – ran straight into a pile of guys and disappeared into the pile. And then the play just sort of kept going. And then all of a sudden he comes squeezing out the pile at the end, then got sandwiched between two other Alouettes and still managed to run through uh, for the touchdown. And uh, uh, it's funny because we were watching that. My wife makes a comment because we we're watching the, the replay of that in slow motion, sort of looking at the play through the uh, uprights and he completely disappears and as he, in slow motion, squeezes out of the pile, my wife makes the comment, look, everybody, the mother rhino is giving birth. <laughs> Which, I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's a throw to possibly the greatest film of our time, Ace Ventura 2, Pet Detective, <laughs> When Nature Calls. So, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Trey Mason was really doing some good stuff out there. Yeah, he had a good game, and the leading receiver for the Riders this week, Kyren Moore, 9 for 126, and a big touchdown uh, catch where he caught that in front of another receiver there in that uh, prayer that Clara threw up. And talk about dragging the pile. The 165-pound Moore also dragged the pile. I think he dragged uh, Chip Cox for about 10 yards. He was on fire tonight. Shaq Evans. Yeah, Kyren Moore looked. Kenny Shaw, go ahead, Dylan. Moore looked great. That. I can't remember which rider that was that he collided with, but I thought for a second, you know, because you see players when they're doing, when they collide legs, that could be a pretty serious injury, but he's limping. He's limping towards his touchdown celebration. I'm like, oh no, he's hurt. And then the next clip they show him, he's already doing a dance. So, you know, that was good. That was good. That's right. Yeah. It looked like he rolled his ankle or something there, but luckily he kept playing. But yeah, Shaq Evans as well, you were saying, right? Well, Shaq Evans, you know, a couple games ago, he had, what, three, four drops in a game. Looked pretty pretty bad. But today, six for 114. Uh, pretty awesome. And uh, Kenny Shaw, who filled in for Naaman Roosevelt, five for 75. Uh, what do you think about the receiving core there, Bryce? They were flying around the field. They were catching these deep passes. Evans and JWL, they, they just couldn't get into the end zone. Like, they had these big breakout catches. And they got hauled down at like the one yard line. And let's not forget, talking about short yardage, because Dylan, that seemed to be a real problem with you. But Nick Marshall, getting it done on the one yard line, he took, uh, he, he ran in two touchdowns, and they almost looked easy. So the Riders really improved on that, which I think they were struggling with at the uh, beginning of the season. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The, the remedy Nick Marshall has been for the Rough Riders' short yardage woes. Is pretty impressive, and we mentioned this a few weeks back, and I believe it was Marshall who went up to head coach Chris Jones and said, "You get me the ball on those short yardage situations, and I will get into the end zone." And Jones basically said, "Challenge accepted," and gave him a chance, and and it's been like that ever since. So, hats off to Marshall. Marshall is doing great, and not only is he great short yardage, but he's awesome on the corner. Because remember, this is the same season where we were putting uh, Deron Carter out on corner. Marshall, yeah, you know he's back from injury and he's shutting it down there. Okay, I want to talk about Brandon Doisier, Dozier. So I think he plays Doisier. Yeah, Do- <laughs> Doisier. That's it. Brandon Doisier with uh, Montreal. I'm not sure oh. he's a safety or a middle linebacker. This guy is a dirty player. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, no yards on Moore. He ran straight into him, got the 15-yard penalty, but like it wasn't thinking about stopping. Hit him while he was trying to catch the ball, and then he went head hunting on Moore later in the game. Came down, uh, throwing his shoulder into Moore's head after Moore was down. He got flagged on both of them, but like I, I it looked like he was trying to get in Moore's head. This guy Doisier, 
dirty player in my books. Do you guys uh, see this? You guys seen it any differently than yeah. I did? No, I saw it. He's a dirty, dirty dude. Dirty, dirty doisier. That's what we're going to call him for the rest of his life. Dirty, dirty <laughs> doisier. Two dirties, not one, two. Got to say both yeah. dirties both times. All the time. Dirty, dirty doisier. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, just uh, who knows, man. You know, like, you know, when you talk to uh, guys like Chris Best and those other football players, who knows what happened on the field there? So, uh, not that a thing at all, but uh, who knows what kind of things were going on that we didn't no, get no, to see. No. You don't, it doesn't matter. You don't ever aim for a guy's head to try to take him out and end his career and, you know, brain damage him for later in life so he can't remember the names of his grandchildren. Like, you, you, that's dirty, dirty Doisier doing what he does. Now, dirty, dirty <laughs> Doisier, he, uh, you know, he didn't stop Moore from having a great game. But there was a couple times there where he looked like Moore was looking over his shoulder a little bit, and there was a couple drops there in the second half. But he still, again, was able to be the leading receiver. Dirty, dirty Doise. Uh, hopefully, uh, he doesn't cause any injuries in the future. Now, the dirty D. The dirty, dirty D. So mm-hmm. we nearly the Riders nearly collapsed again in the fourth quarter. Let me set it up here. Riders leading thirty-one seventeen with six minutes remaining in the third. Thirty-one seventeen. Montreal brings the game to 31-29, and they miss a two-point convert that would have tied it up, and we ended up winning by five. But this collapse here is this worrisome? Are you, what did you guys? What do you guys think when this was happening? When we're up two, and all of a sudden, Montreal is about to tie. Got the gong on that one on both of us, I guess. <laughs> um, no, you know what? That's rider football, man. That's how we fight. That's uh, <clears throat> I don't ever expect us to blow a team out. It happens occasionally, and I'm like, wow, look at us go. But to be honest with you, how many times have you seen the riders take the lead and every rider fan immediately looks at the clock and says, crap, we <laughs> left too much time <laughs> on the clock. Yeah, and then and then it's basically we just know we're going to lose, you know. So we got to manage that clock right to score at the right time because it's never over when it's rider football. Like, oh, oh my goodness, and that's what my wife said. Like, Josh says it all the time. It's like, what's with the riders and last minute victories or last minute losses? It seems like it's constant, and this I, this 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 uh, repetition of losing to the worst team in the league seems to happen a lot as well. Unless we're the worst team in the league, and then we might get a one over on Calgary or something in the year. Bryce, what do you think about this fourth quarter near near collapse? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, it happens, right? Uh, I think it just happens. Football teams they get up by uh, the two scores, and um, the defense starts to just kind of play soft. That's just uh, what happens. They give them just enough breathing room to kind of almost get back in. I mean, it happens. Hey, it's football. It's football. And yeah, you know what? And the CFL needed a few Johnny Menzel highlights to, to throw out there to the world. So I don't mind that he almost brought brought in a, a game comeback. They mentioned on the commentary there, this would have been the first ever Johnny Menzel uh, game-winning drive had he done it on this game. So, I mean, obviously the guy needs a little, needs a little edge. Didn't get it from us. So I'm okay with that too. But, um, they needed Montreal and their fans. They need something to cheer about. So oh, for sure, you know the fact that it was a close game. I don't even mind. And the only close game in the during the week, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So we come down to thirty seconds remaining. We're up by five. I think we're on about the forty yard line. Third and one, and Jones decides to go for it. If he gets it, you win the game. If you don't get it, the other team has 30 seconds to march the field and win the game with a touchdown. Honest opinions. Did you like the call when you saw that they were staying on the field to get that yard? I love the call. It's like if your offense can't get one, get you one yard to win the game, then why are you even putting on a jersey and going on the field? Like that should be automatic. I think you got to have the faith in your offense to do that for you every time. And uh, if you if they, yeah, if he doesn't, then what kind of a coach does he call himself? He can't even get his men to to get one yard to win the game. I love the call. It's 
pretty much puts the game on that one play. And uh, it's an advantage for the offense because all they have to do is pretty much fall forward, and then they win. So at that time, you're up by how much? Five points. So field goal still gave Montreal a chance to tie, is what you're saying. If we if we got the field goal, <laughs> we'd go up eight. Yeah, we. And then yeah, so yeah, they they could I mean. tie, but they would need a two pointer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what okay. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here. So uh, we were debating this as we we're watching the game, and I thought to myself, I'm kicking a field goal. I I was willing to play the odds on that, and I, I was confident Lowther would make the field goal, <laughs> and. Uh, and then the Montreal wouldn't have enough time to do anything, and the defense would have would have squashed them. But again, Bryce is right too. You know, it's one yard that we almost didn't get. But uh, yeah, it was well done. Jones, yeah, Jones, what, what did we say last week? Was it last week? Was it week before, week before? Gambler. He's oh, the yeah. gambler. Yeah, with the he's listening to Kenny Rogers, and I'm with Dylan on this one. I would have kicked the field goal, but hey, you guys are. You guys are crazy. You get that you, you conservative from nowhere. You we put the ball in their hands. to speak. So we took a <laughs> turn to stare. He's coming. It's feeling. He's getting the feeling. You gotta finish <laughs> the song again. You're gonna start the song. <laughs> All right. Better I be the gambler. All right, right. That's, 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 that's plenty. Let's throw it to Dylan. Dylan, don't you have something else you want to tell us about? Yeah, you gotta know when to kick him. And know when to trick them, you know. Yeah, yeah you know what? I got another Stephen Stephen Logan. Good to see him return back a touchdown. Sure, it was against the Riders, but hell, that was a fun little play. Again, he looked like he birthed out of a mother rhino as well with his uh, <laughs> kick return touchdown because he was completely surrounded and somehow managed to get through. And uh, haven't seen Stephen Logan return a touchdown in what has it been. Five years, they said, or something like that. <laughs> I hated that touchdown so much. It, like it, <laughs> someone tried to tackle him, it sort of looked like he was down, so he wasn't down though. And then he just sprinted off, and no one was even close to him. It was so depressing yeah. to see. But yes, good for Stephen Logan. Anything left uh, to talk about for the game? I guess uh, Hughes uh, returns the sack column, getting another sack. He was shut out for a couple weeks. Uh, anything else? Five guys? weeks. I think they said five weeks without a sack. Something like that. Three, four, possibly five. Dylan Bryce, last thoughts on the game. I hate the name Sack Achuan. I know it's not a part of the game. I just wanted to say it again. I think that's our new t-shirts, right? The Sack Achuan? <laughs> We're changing they... the podcast name, actually. Mm. <laughs> sack Achuan. No. 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 It's bad. It's so bad. Yeah, uh, Zach Kolaris, eight different receivers, uh, 394 yards. I mean, he looked good. Riders are looking good. Second place in the West. Calgary, coming for you. Kidding. But... <laughs> okay, with that, we have a feature interview like no other today. Dylan, tell us about it. Picture this. I walk up the stairs of the Saskatchewan Legislative Building on a rainy day. I walk up in there to the security guard. <clears throat> they put me through the metal detectors, the x-ray machines, the, 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 the radar gun handheld devices. I mean, I thought I'm taking a flight here. That's, that's the kind of security I had to go through to get this interview. Because <clears throat> Gene Mikowski is rider royalty after all. And um, he's also a member of the Legislative Assembly. So we did the interview at the Legislative Building in his office. And Gene Mikowski, Minister Mikowski, is an incredible guy, super down to earth. You know, as soon as we started talking, he was just like uh, like one of the boys. You know, he just <clears> – <throat> I, I, I should say, like, it's almost like he came just, – just another – member of the podcast team you know that's how that's how warm and inviting he was gene's one of the boys and that's just how it is and it's a great chance to talk to him and despite the fact that you know he's in a fancy suit and i'm in this you know historic building uh, talking to the guy he just loved talking about football like it was he could have he could have went all day and you know the interview itself lasted over 30 minutes so we're going to split it up here for the fans 
We're going to give you part one of Gene Makowski. We'll give you part two when we're damn well ready to do it. And you know what? Just listen, because it's great talk. Here I am, Dylan Robson, in the office of Regina Gardner Park MLA, Gene Makowski, the Minister of Parks, Culture, and Sport, but also... We've been we've been referring to you as Rough Rider Royalty, so yeah. I hope you don't hope you don't mind that. Jim Mikowski, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, so you had seventeen seasons in the CFL, all with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. You were drafted in nineteen ninety-five. You uh, uh, CFL most outstanding lineman in 04, 05. West Division All Star for seven straight years. Uh, Five time CFL All Star. Two hundred eighty four total games surpassing uh, Roger Aldeg for most games as a rider. Um, 2015 CFL Hall of Fame, and as if all that wasn't enough, guest appearance on Corner Gas. <laughs> so um, one heck of a career. Um, uh, if you could sum it all up in, in just a, a sentence or two, you know, your, t- your time with the CFL, what would you say? Well, I just love the CFL. I mean, uh, growing up as a kid, I, I watched it all the time. Uh, I'm probably over two sentences by now, but I, I just, uh, I just always love football and, and to be able to play for the Rough Riders uh, for a long time is, uh, boy, it's uh, something uh, uh, is very special part of my life. So let's just go back to 1995. What was it like being a rookie on the Rough Riders, the team you grew up watching? Yeah, it was almost surreal at times. I mean, I'm uh, sitting uh, in lockers uh, close to Ray Elgard and Bobby Durison and uh, Tom Burgess and, um, you know, those guys you grew up watching. And uh, so you, uh, you got to grow up pretty quick. Uh, you have to uh, you have to know what you're doing. It's a big step between uh, the CIS ball and pro ball. It's uh, so much quicker that everybody's good and everybody's fast and it uh, it was certainly an eye op- eye opening experience, and and like I said, you you have to learn fast. You have to you have to fit in uh, uh, in a in a short amount of time and with a short training camp. Yeah, because I mean that was sort of the end of you know pretty significant Rough Rider era. Uh, like you said, like the Rider absolute legends, Elgard Narcisse was still there, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, and and um, so. You sort of came at almost like a—I don't know if you can name eras, you know, down to it, down to a year or, or what—but you kind of came in a transitional period for the Rough Riders at the time. The head coach was was it Ray Yach or is it Ray Josh? Ray Yach. Ray Yach was my first coach. He gave me my first uh, first opportunity, so it was. Uh... Uh, yeah, we, we weren't uh, very good that year, and as you mentioned, we uh, there was a bit of a transition. I just, yeah, you mentioned Narco was on the team, and uh, Dan Rasevich, and and uh, uh, Dave Ridgway was there as well. So I, I got to play with some of those uh, rider legends you, you talked about. But yeah, um, during that time, uh, and and subsequently after with Jim Daly, there was sort of a um, changing of the guard, I guess, so to speak. Uh, that's that's always the case in pro football. There's always going to be turnover, but some of those long-time sort of legendary guys are come to the end of their careers, and and uh, so I was a bit at the tail end of that, and and uh, uh, during my first few years in the league. Yeah, so you mentioned Jim Daly. So let's just go through the the head coaches uh, that you had there with the Rough Riders. So uh, Ray Yock, Yock, yep, yeah, <laughs> Ray Yock, Jim Daly, Cal Murphy, Danny Barrett, Kent Austin, Ken Miller. Corey Chamberlain. So, uh, of those coaches throughout the, your career, might get you in a little bit of trouble here, but who was your favorite coach? <laughs> well, actually, I, I'll, I'll correct you. I wasn't able to play with Corey Chamberlain. Uh, okay. he, he came the year uh, year after I was done. But uh, oh boy, uh, you know what? Every every coach leaves you something. You learn something from every coach. You, uh, you get from something from every coach. I guess I would have to say because we won the Great Cup in '07. Uh, certainly, Ken Austin. Uh, was was a was a big uh, figure during my career. Uh, obviously, uh, what he brought to the team in one year, and uh, to get us over the hump to that great cup. I mean, he was. Uh, I thought he was a uh, you know a outstanding coach. Obviously, knew his way around offense. He could uh, uh, could teach quarterbacks uh, like not many others. And so uh, again, I think he he put us over the top to what was a pretty good team the previous several years. I just couldn't get to that great cup and win it, but uh, we were able to do so with Kent. Yeah, so 2007, Rough Riders went 12-6, and six, second in the West, 
Um, tell us what you remember about that season. Was it was there sort of a special feeling, you know, at the beginning of the year, or did you guys once you got rolling, did it feel like, hey, maybe we, you know, I mean, obviously you, you want that Grey Cup every year, but did it feel different in two thousand seven? Well, uh, I, that, that's a good question. I, I mean, I, I knew we had a good team. We had good players. We had Kerry Joseph uh, at the helm there that year, and he uh, he, he did uh, some some good things in the league previous to that. But uh, you know, I just I just think Kent he set the tone early that uh, you know this is uh, this, this is uh, a business, and, and we're going to treat it like that, and we're going to. Uh, compete hard in practice and and that'll translate over into the game so uh i don't know if there was one exact moment i i think of uh the uh 07 labor day game that was kind of a big turning point and and the weeks after that we went on i think if i recall we went on a bit of a uh you know a losing streak there uh we we got we got shellacked after the labor day game like we uh Particularly the old line, I remember that game pretty vividly because we got beat bad. The the, the bombers were uh, Doug Brown and company were were not impressed with the last game how they, how we uh, kind of uh, slipped one through there uh, with the with the uh, the draw uh, for Gary to win on the last play of the game. We were two evenly matched teams, and of course we ended up playing in the Grey Cup. But um, you know that. Uh, we could have gone on a, a bit of a losing streak there. We did actually, but we were able to get out of it, and so I think that was an important turning point. But I don't know if there were, there was one certain point. I knew we had a good team, we had good coaching. Uh, you know, we had Lapo, we had Richie Hall, we had uh, you know good line coaches uh, all along the way. So uh, we put it all together that year, and and uh, uh, the, the result was obviously what it was. Uh, not sure if there was a you know a different feeling. Obviously, we when you start to win things going in a positive direction i think that's important and we were we were able to do that in in, uh, in those spurts and again stop those losing uh losing trends uh relatively early yeah so you mentioned the 2007 great cup versus the winnipeg blue bombers i mean for bombers riders fans that's you know a dream come true nobody would have expected that kind of great cup um what was that what was that game like for you guys i know it was for me watching as a fan it really felt like a battle like like points weren't coming easy it was it was a it was a tough game so uh, what was it like for you as a player as the game progressed and you got towards the end well I think going into I, I was able to play in four great cups and you uh you're you're on edge you're a little more nervous obviously because you, you know what's on on at stake and on the line uh it, it was a tough game it wasn't it wasn't a high scoring game it was a kind of more defensive game not really uh you know one of those classic uh you know, back and forth, uh, spine tingling games, but there were some big plays, of course. But uh, you know, you, you put it all on the line. I know that's a cliche, but you're you're pretty exhausted at the end of uh, a long season, but also a, a hard fought playoffs and that game. And so, it's uh, it's a big relief uh, to to uh, be able to come out uh, with a win in that game for sure. Being on the uh, the other end, uh, uh, other times in my career, so yeah, it was, it was definitely a hard fought game. Uh, uh, again, as as those big play games uh, come down to uh, just a few big plays within each game, and so the the footage of Marco on Holt handing you the Grey Cup trophy kind of lives on as as you know you hoisting that cup. I mean, it was a big moment for for Rough Rider fans. We hadn't won it since 1989. Uh, we were in the Grey Cup in '97, I think, and uh, so you played in that one as well. But um, yeah, so 2007 big year and I feel like it really sort of kicked off a new era of, of Rough Rider football. I feel like in 2007 the fans were wild and they just seemed to keep getting wilder. I remember fans streaking on the field and doing all kinds of crazy things and um, and uh, 08 guys didn't make it to the Great Cup but 09 you did and I know 2009 a lot of fans uh, don't want to talk about that game <laughs> but uh, I think we should I think we should talk about it. Um uh, the Rough Riders were first place in the regular season for the first time since 1976. Uh, I mean, like you said, D- Darian Durant, the Canadian Air Force, Coach Ken Miller, um, and then, of course, the the final seconds of that game. And uh, is it is it is it something you have reflected? I mean, you've reflect, reflected on it, yeah. But is it something you avoid talking about, or is it something you've sort of come to terms with that game? Yeah, I guess you come to terms with it. Uh, I just, just just try not to think about it, really. I, I just kind of 
compartmentalize it away and it's uh, it's done and it's over with obviously at the time uh, uh right after a few days after is pretty uh pretty devastating uh uh series of events that took place but uh again it, it's it's uh over time you put it into perspective and you, you don't think about it as much and and uh, again we're many years later now and i you know i just don't think about it honestly <laughs> yeah well, yeah, it's, it's nearing, I guess it's almost 10 years now. Yeah, it might, um, uh, might be a coping me- mechanism on my part, just to <laughs> totally carve it off and, and put, it, put it away. But uh, again, uh, that, that's what you try and do, I guess. Um, so are you, are you able to sort of take us back to, to those, those final seconds? You know, what was going through your head? I was there at the game as a fan. I remember that flag going up, and then it was like the next sort of three minutes of life Fast forward in my head, I could see it all. I was like, "Oh no, this is." You know, when I saw that flag go up, I knew that was that was kind of it. Uh, so, but how about you? What were you? What were you seeing? Sorry, listeners, for leaving you on a cliffhanger with that interview. But I just want to say, Gene Mikowski, he's a big man, he's a big player. He's got a big job. He's the minister of sport, recreation, and culture, and and all that. Uh, he's got a. He's got. A big job, but I thought he was ready to talk about the 2009 Grey Cup game. It's been almost 10 years, you know, but I, I, I was saying before how much he loved talking football. When I mentioned that 2009 Grey Cup, I tell you the mood in that room changed. He did not want to talk about that game, but he did. But, you know, I even gave him a little bit of warm up and said, hey, you know, nobody wants to talk about this game, but I think we should talk about it. And, um, he gave me, he gave me, you know, his perspective, what he saw from the sidelines, what he felt from the sidelines, and what it was like for him and the team. And uh, so we're leaving you on that cliffhanger, listeners, because we, we don't want to just throw you to the wolves. We want to give you some time. We're going to air the rest of the interview next week. Trust me, you're going to want to hear it. So stay tuned for that. All right. Now it's time for the Rouge. Can someone please uh, tell the, the fans at home what the Rouge is all about? Well, if you're familiar with Canadian football, you're familiar with the Rouge. It's one point that you get for botching a field goal or cranking a punt right out the end zone. But the point is, it's one point. And now you're going to hear one point from each of your Rider Outsiders. I'll get us started here. Apologies to Manziel. Now, Manziel got Montreal moving, and he's an exciting quarterback. Last week on the show, I pretty much called for uh, that he was going to retire at the end of the season. But after watching that game, I think he's still got some fire, and I think he will be back. I'm changing my tune. He will be back next year. Next. I'm going to rouge you right now, and uh, I'm going to talk about something that I saw. Maybe it was a little bit of a... The universe is trying to tell us something. I don't know, but we had the Ryder games playing, the Riders playing in Montreal, and everybody saw it. You're watching it. You're trying to watch it on TV, and uh, even uh, even the commentators said, "What's the deal with all these seagulls flying around?" The ca- they were flying right in front of the camera most of the time, and then it was it was also weird. Montreal was wearing those jerseys, the throwbacks. And they had the, like, bird wings on the shoulder pads. So I'm like, what's going on with all this bird stuff? I'm saying, it was a bird, it was a bird game. <laughs> bird game. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> uh, you know what? I had the rouge all ready to go, and it, it slipped my mind as soon as I heard it was a bird game. Uh, <laughs> Shall we move bird's on? Bird's the word. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Basically, all I wanted to say was something about Zach Colaris. Basically, uh, we have to have Zach Colaris with this team going forward. So mm-hmm. please keep sliding, keep running out of bounds, throw the ball out when you're going to take a sack. Just stay safe out there, Zach, because I'm telling you, ever since he's come back, this Ryder team, talk about the struggles on offense all you want. Mm-hmm. I don't call it struggling on offense when we're doing enough to win games. And I've said that before. So we need Zach Colares healthy for these playoffs because the playoffs are coming up fast. Great point. That's our boy. Yeah, great point. He had a great game. Okay, 
Good point. That weak clapping in the background means it's time for the meh of the week. The meh of the week. I'll lead off again. Edmonton puts up three points against Winnipeg. Fire special teams coordinator after a blocked punt. My meh of the week. And I called it last week. I think these Eskimos are sliding and they're falling apart. And they will miss the playoffs. We can see it now. Winnipeg's going to sneak in there. Edmonton, meh of the week. Next. Yeah, my meh of the week is just all of these blowout games. I'll, I'll pick one. Pick any one except for the Ryder game. Look, uh, BC Hamilton, boring game. Totally boring. Hamilton just steamrolled them. And uh, Calgary, Toronto, yeah. Boring. Snooze fest. Why would you even want to turn on the TV what, like and and watch some some team just get like pecker slap like all game. <laughs> oh, I mean the dude. bird, the bird. It's the bird, the woodpecker is what I'm trying to say because it was a bird game. Pecker slapped. All right, interesting. It's not. Yeah, it's not a swear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about. It's uh, first game was Calgary 38, Toronto 16. The next game Hamilton 40, BC 10. And then Winnipeg 30, Edmonton 3. So, yeah, three blowouts. But compared to last week, there was great. There was pretty great games last week. But, yeah. Last week. Some ugly yeah, games week this 16. week for sure. Week 16 is the week of the blowouts. Dylan? Man, of the week. Just unprepared. <laughs> Just so unprepared every time. Just going what do you mean right every the, time? Right what do you mean every time? <laughs> Just this show, I think. Just this show. I love the I love the pause. It's like a three second pause. Like, come on, think of something. Oh. Ah, Zach Caleros or something. Ah, I'll just say Zach Caleros. Your 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 rouge was that there were birds. <laughs> Were, oh, hey, call it's one hurts. point. Oh. It hurts <laughs> the laugh. That I, I wanted I to make. Birds, the birds at the game. It's a bird game. The birds was a bad one, but yes, uh, <laughs> Dylan, we'll give you another All crack right, yeah. here. Man of the week. Man of the week. Brett Lowther missed an extra point. Come on, man. We can't be missing things like extra points. Okay. Uh, I, I was vocal when Calgary missed an extra point earlier in the season. Got to hit those extra points because those are the things where it's like, hey, all of a sudden uh, a field goal wins it for the other team or all of a sudden they can tie it with a two-point conversion. This is a big thing. Don't miss those extra points. How dare you, sir, talk ill of the <laughs> Brett Lowther. Have you seen the T-shirt? Brett effing <laughs> Lowther. <laughs> Brett Lowther, I think he no, has, I'm not talk- his percentage on field goals, I think, is better than his percentage on co- and his converts. He's missed a couple this year. I hear you. But that guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm. My goodness. I'm not. The, the Met of the week is Dylan. not Brett Lowther. The Met of the week is missing an extra point. That's, that's it. That's you can't. It. You can't miss those automatics. Yeah. Can't miss it's it. not automatics. These aren't from the five yard line anymore. These are, what, 32 yard kicks or whatever it is. When did they move that? Two years ago, <laughs> three years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's, I know, I know. It's the you got to hit those. Goodness. Extra this is what happens when you come in the show not prepared. You throw heat. I am on bro. on you know very good guys and great players like Brett Lowther, and not until recently <laughs> I don't believe Dylan was even saying his name correctly. No, you you go ask <laughs> Brett Lowther. If he should be hitting the extra points. Let's see what his answer is. Lother? Brett Lowther is L- so Lowther. relaxed, he doesn't even know if he hits the kicker, like if he makes the kick or not. So chill. Yeah, he's too, he just swings, too cool. walks off, whatever happens, happens. Was it the last week? He didn't even know what the score was. That's how relaxed he is. He's just chilling, making some kicks. Well, you got to get those extra points. I'll tell you what the score is. Touchdowns right. were seven points, <laughs> universally known. Not six. Oh, thanks. <laughs> What you got to do is score more touchdowns to win football games. Oh, yeah, the Madden. The Madden, yes. <laughs> the Madden right. is a... The Met of the Week. <laughs> we'll uh, give it to Dylan, uh, Brett Lowther. Yeah, yeah, you don't... Met of the Week. I don't, I don't know if I want it anymore, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm uh, not being fair. 
Maybe we should give the Met of the Week to the the birds. The bird. And, the, bir- the bird. Whatever. Game. <laughs> the bird, what is a what is a bird game? What is a bird was, game? It's not even a okay. reference to anything. It's not even <laughs> no, a no. Look, okay. What is a bird okay. game? To the because, birds means something. The Alouettes are a bird. Yeah. And they had, they had and there was birds at the game, so it was like they're showing up for their. There's like the mascots for the Alouettes, right? Seagulls. It's a bird game. Yeah, I get that. No, but okay. <laughs> we should just let that die, I think. And that's fine. All right. So good, uh, okay. good effort, everyone. Let's move on to our final segment of the show. Um, good thing we're not keeping track, I think, of who's winning, who's losing on these predictions. Uh, I'm keeping track. I'm actually doing pretty good. Got nearly all my rider picks right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I know that I thought BC was going to come to play this week, and that didn't happen. But first up this week is uh, Friday, Winnipeg in Ottawa. Bryce, the genius, self-professed, who will win the matchup, Bombers, Red Blacks? Well, I know why all the listeners actually tune in to the RO podcast. is because they always want to know what the genius is going to think is going to happen in the next week here. And it's week 17. And uh, you know what? I think... Winnipeg is looking strong. I think Winnipeg is going to go and beat Ottawa at home. Okay. Crazy. Winnipeg just beat Winnipeg. Crazy. Okay, Dylan, what do you think? Ottawa. Ottawa, when they're on, can play some mean football. And unfortunately, they've done it to the Riders twice. I think uh, (laughs) Ottawa is hitting their stride, and they're going to continue playing good football for the rest of the year. Ottawa wins this one. Next up Saturday is Toronto at BC. BC plays good one week, and they crap the bed the next week. Toronto and BC, who's going to win out of these two basement teams? Well, there's a battle in the basement. They're not even in like a cool like basement suite. They're in their mom's basement right now. And uh, I'm going to take BC at home because they just have that home field advantage way over there in Vancouver, and it'll be one of those kind of possibly nighty night games for Toronto. And they'll be a little bit past their bedtime. I'm taking BC for the win. I agree with you. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, BC. BC. BC and you later, Toronto. Boom. Next up, Monday, Calgary visits Montreal. Can Calgary well, keep uh, winning? Calgary's going to beat Montreal. I mean, it's going to be a fun battle. You're going to have... You're going to have Bo Levi Mitchell. You're going to have Johnny Manziel. They're kind of similar kind of quarterbacks, sort of, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Calgary's going to win this one, but it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a fun game, I think. I'm going to go – I'm going to side with hope on this one. <laughs> I hope Montreal beats Calgary because that is what would make that a fun game. I hope BM and the Stumps go walking into Montreal – and lose. Lay a big egg right there for the birds and their bird game of football. Maybe the birds will show up again. They Montreal Alouettes. Owls for the win. All right. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm picking yeah. I'm picking owls to beat the Stampeders. That's what I'm doing. So I want to recognize. <laughs> Y'all recognize. Yeah, I, I love the call and I we all hope Montreal wins this one, so because uh, that just gives – I don't want to say it. I don't want to jinx it. But if Calgary starts at, you know, gearing down here and lose a couple of games, <laughs> we're not that far off from first place. We're only a couple of games out if they, if they stop winning. Is that likely? No, but go Montreal. Monday, the Riders uh, are going to close out the show again. Edmonton and Regina. Who do you like? Well, I'm going to go on something that's a little bit bigger than hope. I'm just going on the fact that, like, we can see it. Edmonton's already hit the bottom. They can only get better. They, cool. I mean, they only scored, what, three points. So Saskatchewan's going to beat Edmonton. They're not going to be able to turn it around in time, and that's not going to be good because that's going to really uh, put Edmonton in last place there with BC. I think they'll be tied for last place. Yeah, well, I guess they well, I could cross over. Still, but yeah, Edmonton, uh, they're done. Saskatchewan wins this one. Dylan? Uh, yeah, you know I'm picking the Riders. I've actually I've picked the Riders to win. The majority, the majority of my Rider picks have always been right. That's what, what I'm trying to say here. I've picked them to win. They've won 
as many times as I said they would, minus a few losses here or there. The thing you got to look at after this is that schedule. It's all West from this point forward. This is this is it. This is basically the uh, first round of the playoffs, if you ask me. It's what I like to call it. I like to call it the first round of the playoffs because uh, it's all West. It's all West, boys, guys. You hear me? I hear you. It's all it's, West. Yeah. It's, it's a hard uh, last leg of the season. And did you know that the BC is only one game out of third place? They have six yeah. wins. Edmonton um, and Winnipeg have seven. Like, it's still wide open, third to fifth. Uh, that's what I mean. Yeah, you don't just, think when we play Winnipeg after this, because what do we got? We got uh, Edmonton. Then we play Winnipeg. Then we play Calgary again. Then we play BC. I mean, these are going to be battles. This is this this is where it really starts to to get ugly. This is where it starts to get dirty. And uh, I really think the Riders are going to have to excel. I'm glad they saved some of their key starters, rotated out guys that we heard yep. Jones talking about. Because it's, it's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's going to be the wild, wild west. Kind of like that Will Smith movie that he did. With the big mechanical spider, it'll be better than that movie. Better than actually. that movie. You know that movie gets yes. a lot of like bad rap, but I like that movie. Now, you know what's good? The entire Men in Black series, Men in Black one, two, and three, they are incredibly underrated works of art. The first one, they're good. good. I'll give the you that. third yeah. one, the third one, is an absolute gem. If you haven't seen it. <laughs> Or haven't seen it in a while. Watch if if you take anything away from this week's podcast. Yeah, it's you got to watch Men in Black Three and When Nature Calls and Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. Okay, and with that, <laughs> we are at the end of the show. Okay, so uh, let's throw it out for any last words, Bryce. What's your last word? I think I, I have to eat my hat. I have to actually go to the t-shirt store and start making hat. these, like, making these shirts for the Charleston Hughes sack at you one. Because I did say, if it catches on, I'm going to try and capitalize on it. So uh, I guess You should I, make the shirt and we'll give it away on the show. That's a good idea. That's a great you idea. brought it up on the podcast, so you probably got to do have, it now. Or maybe not. But <laughs> maybe... Maybe it'll be a mysterious thing. Yeah. We'll see. All right, and Dylan, the final word goes to you. Shaq Evans, most improved player this season. Well, he sucked earlier. I think he did. And now he's doing He's doing incredible. He's doing it. The Shaq attack is back, and Zach is on the train. So I'm happy about the Riders' offense. And uh, receivers looking great. Zach is looking great. Riders are on a roll. Six of the last seven are a win. Looking good. That's the show for this week for Bryce Wiles and Dylan Robson. I'm Mitch Wiles, and this was The Rider Outsiders. Outsiders.